I remember when my son was two years old and I felt an incredible amount of pressure because not only was I a stay-at-home mom, I was also by profession an early childhood educator and I felt the need to engage with him at all points in time. It took me a while to understand that there are different types of play. There are many different types of play depending on the age and stage of your child. One of the forms of play is free play or unoccupied play. It means the complete free expression of their thinking, their movement or even their imagination. A child should be allowed to stare at the ceiling and look at the fan aimlessly or stare out of the window or jump in a puddle. These are all ways in which they're just exploring their environment around them on their own terms. Solitary play is when a child chooses to play by himself. Um, sometimes children play with an, uh, their environment or objects in their environment. Um, the Play-Doh that they're playing with or the Lego that they're playing with. Sometimes it could be a book or uh, it could be a puzzle set. Whatever it is, it is their choice to play by themselves. And as adults, we need to resist the urge to engage with them at this point, allow them to follow their own thought process right to the very end. Allow them to follow their play right to the very end. This helps them uh, to develop patience, it helps them to problem solve, it helps them to eventually uh, be able to complete tasks and feel a sense of achievement at the completion of the task. We as adults uh, feel the need to rush in and engage with them and pro kind of steer that play in a particular direction but solitary independent play is important. It's a big, big, big skill that they need to learn. Onlooker play or what we call look and play is nothing but a child's need to observe and play. They learn by watching. They learn by watching a parent do a puzzle or play an instrument. They're just watching and they're learning all the time. They learn by standing on the sidelines at a playground and watching the other children play. So don't pressurize your child when they're in an environment like that. Give them space, give them time. They'll decide when they're ready to join in. In the meantime, don't fear that they're missing out. They're not. They're just playing by looking. Parallel play or playing side by side is a base level of play. Um, a lot of times children are not developmentally ready yet to play with another child but they're happy enough, they're starting to develop their social skills so they're happy enough to play alongside another child so that's why it's called parallel, they play side by side and so give them that space, don't push them to play with another child, be respectful of the fact that um, their toys are their toys maybe before somebody comes home to play decide in advance which toys can the other child play with they have a very strong sense of this is mine and give them that space if there's something that they're particular about keep it away so that there are no fights um, they're a bit more territorial in terms of their play so allow them that space to play alongside but don't push them to play with the other child As your child grows and their social skills start to emerge, uh, they'll be a far more ready, they'll want to make friends, they'll get excited when their friends come over for a play date. But they're still not at that stage where they're ready to play together, but they engage in what we call related play or associative play, where, for example, if you're looking at, um, they're playing with Lego, they're both happy to play with Lego, but each wants to build their own tower. Or if you're playing with Play-Doh, they each want to create their own little Play-Doh figure. So give them uh, things that they can play with together, but 
each one has their own pile or each one has their own little project that they work on because that again it, they're playing together but separate so there's still that sense of mind but they're happy to play with the same thing together so choose toys like lego play-doh um, things that have multiple parts and pieces that allow them to be in the same environment and they're not fighting over the one object And finally, we get to cooperative play or playing together. And that's when they learn, they develop their social skills, that ability to take turns, to share, to communicate what they're feeling, to listen to somebody else's point of view, to learn that things may not go their way, um, to learn that life has ups and downs. It's all from this basis of cooperative play. So board games, uh, family games, any kind of uh, running and catching games, games that have rules, games that they're expected to take turns in, both physical uh, games as well as sit down indoor and outdoor games. All of this helps build their teamwork, their confidence, their communication skills. And that is what sets them up for life. It sets them up for school. So once you start to understand and recognize the different forms of play, it makes it easier for you. So take the pressure off. It's okay if you're not engaging your child every single minute of every single day. It's okay if your child is playing by himself or not playing at all. It's okay if your child is sitting by the sidelines and watching. It's okay if your child is sitting by the side of somebody else and not engaging with the other child. By understanding that all of this is a form of free play, we allow ourselves to actually enjoy every stage, every age. We enjoy the forms of play and it allows us to get down and play with our children.